I will be discussing one of the cases in environmental law. It's actually one of the first cases that you know interpreted the uh, National Environmental Policy Act, which is the NEPA. Right. This case is the Calvert Cliffs Coordinating Committee versus Atomic Energy Commission. So first, we have to understand what the act is for, right? What its its purpose is. So the National Environmental Policy Act um, took major step in uh, requiring all federal agencies to, you know, consider environmental impact of their activities. And one of the procedural, you know, actually one of the procedural requirement that is included in the act is for the agencies to submit a detailed statement, right? So the detailed statement should include the impact of their activity in our environmental, um, I mean, in our environment, and also if there, if it has some benefits, its cost, right? And more importantly, if their activity can somehow have an alternative, right? If they have an alternative um, way in executing, you know, what they want to achieve with their activities without much damage with the environment. And so our petitioner right here, which is the Calvert Cliffs Coordinating Committee, argued that the rules recently released by Atomic Energy Commission did not satisfactorily uh, you know complied with the guidelines provided or what the mandate is of NEPA on the other hand the respondents we have right now which is the atomic energy commission argued that uh, the provisions in NEPA is broad that it leaves um, much uh, much room for interpretation and discretion in the federal agencies. So the court here was tasked to review those arguments and you know, later on we'll know that the, the court of course uh, favored the petitioner but we have to understand why is that so. So as I've mentioned earlier um, the NEPA Required the detailed statement, right? And actually, Atomic Energy Commission has, in fact, um, you know, required their regulatory staff to create the same detailed statement, right? So, if there are applicants for construction permits or uh, operating licenses, they're requiring those applicants to create their own detailed statement, meaning it has to. You know, identify there the impact of their activities in the environment and if they have alternatives and all that. However, it it did not uh, include or the rules released by Atomic Energy Commission did not include how exactly you know those detailed statement will affect their decision making. So um one of the arguments of our petitioner here is that the you know that those um, specific guidelines was not established by the rules released by atomic energy commission while on the other hand this this respondent um is arguing that those uh, applicants that they were already able to approve with construction permits will still have to you know apply to them for the license to operate and on that moment of course they're gonna have to instill the um, the mandate to submit the detailed statements and for them to actually really uh, consider environ environment in in their own uh, I mean on all their activities and that right there is one of the items being argued by petitioner because if they will have if the commission if the atomic energy commission would still have to wait for the applicants to submit application for the operating licenses without actually intervening on the process of the constructing right it it doesn't send uh, it doesn't send a message that they're really um 
you know they're really uh, taking enough step is enough step in considering our environment right because there are going to be a lot of factors there let's say they approve a certain applicant for a construction permit and then they will f uh, you know they will not allow the operating license it will kind of lead towards those applicants will still um you know get accepted even if environmental uh factors were not considered because there were a lot of costs already released on the process of constructing right so what the petitioner wanted here is even in the process of the construction phase the respondents were already intervening and taking positive actions in making sure that environmental factors are being considered so that's one of the items there and uh, other more arguments is that while detailed statements are being created right by the atomic energy commission by their applicants by the regulatory staff and it's being submitted to the board to their board however there is no requirement for those uh, board members to actually read and uh, decide or uh, you know discuss those detailed statements they will not even intervene unless there is a, a complaint about it so if there's no complaint no one's actually um you know disputing those detailed statements they would not do anything so the act of uh, submitting those detailed statements to the hearing board doesn't uh you know do a thing because the board is not uh, apparently uh, doing positive act to you know to to intervene on that and so uh regardless if the you know regardless of how many more arguments our respondent are are you know throwing to our petitioners that you know all about that uh nepa being too broad and all those um uh you know evidence or all those arguments regarding that uh broad argument it's not it's not really being counted on because the the court later on uh was convinced that atomic energy commission is not really uh you know religious not really religiously but um actually following or complying to the mandate of nepa in which of course it violates the 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 act itself and so the decision on this decision on this case is for the atomic energy commission to strengthen their rules right and it has to comply with the mandate of nepa national environmental policy act and it has to make sure that of course what the nepa uh, wants to achieve is also you know for uh atomic energy commission to incorporate environmental considerations into the rules that they will be releasing for the agency that's all thank you